In today's video, we're gonna be building out a new wheelbase gauge for our legend car here. We do have one currently, but it's not really built up to the quality that I would like it to be. I'm not really sure who built out this current one, but we do have a little bit of trouble getting the piece to work as a slider. And when the rust builds up over it, it's impossible to move. The measurements on the ears are not actually where they need to be. And the ears aren't even long enough right now. I'm assuming this was built out for Federals, but now with the Hoosiers, they do stretch out the side of the tire a little bit. So we do need to extend those. And I figured since ours looks kind of wonky and isn't really level, we might as well pick up some stock and uh, try and build a new one for ourselves. We picked up two feet of one inch square so that we could have the two inches we need for the slider, but also have the 18 inches we need to remake our bottom seat mount. And then we've also picked up a nice bit of three quarter inch square. One of these is currently 80 inches long and we'll cut it down to 78 and a half. And then the other one is whatever 12 feet minus 80 inches is. So we'll have plenty of three quarter inch square to make this. We also have some three eighths inch key stock here that will end up being the ears on our slider and the back of the gauge. Obviously we don't have a real fixture table or a welding table or anything like that. So we're gonna try our best to make it on top of here. And we don't have anything that's gonna help us square it up and keep it level other than some actual carpenter squares and just hopefully some levels that'll help keep us squared up. But this will be interesting. We've never done a project at this scale. Realistically, it's not a ton, but it's definitely more welding than I've ever done. Now I'll be the first to admit that we are are nowhere near a quality welder. We weld when we need to, when we just need to stick two pieces of metal together. Typically that just includes our bumper tabs at the moment, just welding them onto the actual bumper structure. But right now we don't really have too much experience welding. So hopefully this gives us a little bit more experience behind the welding gun and uh, hopefully we see the project come out pretty decently. So we've got everything we need for the main section cut out and labeled already. Our long piece right here is a solid 80 inches. And we're gonna leave the extra length compared to the measurement guide that we're using just to kind of give us a little more leg room. We've got both of our legs here cut out, cut them both at nine and three eighths inches since we're gonna be using these two three quarter inch square pieces as our feet. And so when you add up nine and three eighths plus the three quarter, it gives us 10 and one eighth, right as the document tells us to. We've also got our piece of one inch tubing here that is nice and good fitment wise. Everything's squared up on both ends, but that doesn't really matter because as long as our stopping points on both sides are the same and good measurement wise, when we go to put our stock on there, it won't be a big deal. So like I said earlier, we're definitely not a decent welder. We have a welder and some gas and some metal. So all we're trying to do is stick a couple pieces of metal together and hope that it sticks. The outcome we're shooting for is just to have a better product than what we had before because that thing was kind of janky. The measurements just seemed off and it actually didn't work for us at all. So we're hoping that we can at least make a wheelbase gauge that will work for us. And the reason we went this route is because spending less than 50 bucks on material versus spending over 100 bucks on one that's made by US Legend Cars kind of seemed a no brainer for us. Plus we've been wanting to get into welding a little bit more. so. It just kind of seems like the simpler route is to try and make one ourselves and, and kind of hone in our craft a little bit. If it turns out poorly, it is what it is. At least we made it and know that we have an option to get one from US Legend Cars. But if not, you know, then we have a wheelbase gauge that we'll be able to use at the track and help us with setup and whatnot. And it's something that we made. So we're going to try and get this thing fitted up now and get everything welded up. And hopefully it comes out a little bit better than the last one. With you, I don't ever feel calm. I can feel the sweat inside my palm. Play with me like cats and string. You don't understand the pain it brings. You don't ever wanna give me. Pain. You don't ever wanna set me free. You know I'm addicted to you. And it's twisted, you've been gifted with the evil voodoo. Got me coming back for more, even when I've been screwed. Dolls for the pain, here's my heart. 
So I guess I didn't realize it, but my camera did end up dying as we were putting on our key stock. This is basically what we use to determine where we're connecting to the car and our measuring points. So right now, these ones are two and a half inches long, lined up right in the middle. Right now our base is pretty good. It's not too bad considering we don't have a fixture table to really build anything on. It's just a toolbox that we kind of clamp everything down to. We try our best, but right here we do have our piece of one inch square tubing with our key stock right on top so that it can slide around as well. And we did spend quite a bit of time squaring up that end over there, coming over here and making sure the measurements on both sides were the same exact measurements as we clamped it down and welded it together. So as of right now, I'd say that this is pretty good. We do have to stick our stops on here. Probably just gonna cut it out of some flat bar that we have laying around and just tack it on in place just to make sure that the stop do their purpose and stop this at the minimum and the maximum that our legal wheelbase length is. So this step's not too bad. Right now we've cut down a little bit of a square out of some leftover flat bar we've had. And uh, we have this first one clamped down right here to where it's currently stopping our movement back. And if we go through and hook a tape measure onto one end and come over and check this side over here, that puts us right at 72 and three quarters. And as you can see, the measurement is the same on both the left and the right side. So that means that particular piece of bar that we put there is in the correct spot for the shortest legal wheelbase. So we're gonna go ahead and weld up this side just a little bit, just to make sure that our slider is not gonna go any further back, but also so that we can cut that piece off if we ever need to pull this front off and replace it for any reason. So real quick, I just wanna go over why we got that measurement wrong. We were measuring from the outside of the rearmost key stock piece and the outside of the front piece. So we were measuring what we thought was the shortest and the longest wheelbase legal in INEX, but unfortunately we didn't take into account the thickness of the key stock. And the way that these wheelbases work is that you hook the rearmost key stock piece onto the lip of your rear wheel and then the front of the key stock on the front piece will connect to the same piece of the wheel on the front wheel and that is how you determine whether or not your wheelbase is legal. Now we failed to take into account the thickness of the key stock so we didn't add that 3 8 inch of buffer that we needed so although our measurements were technically correct they didn't take that into consideration and ended up being about 3 8 short overall so when we went to go test it, we kind of felt dumbfounded a little bit because obviously when we extended our thing fully out, we weren't even close to being legal compared to what we're supposed to be. So we realized it pretty quickly and then cut those stops off and then we measured everything out, taking into consideration the thickness of the key stock, welded them back on and everything worked out after that. So we did get our measurements wrong quite a bit but we ended up grinding off our, our pieces here and fixing that real quick. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and get it all hooked up. Lock in on that rear wheel. Bring our slider all the way back. Line it up so that it's touching two points of the wheel as well as the rear wheel. And now, as long as it's within our boundaries, that means our wheelbase is legal. So we've got our wheelbase gauge finished up. We did unfortunately mess up our measurements initially, but we went back, cut out those little pieces and re-welded them a little bit further up because we forgot to take into account the rear key stock. So once we added in that 3 8 inch to our wheelbase gauge limits, uh, we ended up getting our measurements right and uh, now our, our gauge is within spec. As long as your wheels fit in the short and as long as they're not longer than the longest, you are considered legal. So, and that's really all there is to making a wheelbase gauge. Not as bad as I was expecting considering we've never done a welding project kind of like this. So 
I'm gonna leave in the description all of the material that we use to include all the lengths, the tubing and the sizes, as well as all the gauges and whatnot. And we're also gonna include how much it costs us to make. It uh, really wasn't too expensive. We spent about 25 bucks on material, plus whatever we used for gas, as well as whatever uh, wire we used. We probably destroyed a blade and whatnot going through everything, plus our labor, so when you factor in all that, uh, it's really up to you to decide whether or not you think it's worth it to just try and make one yourself or go ahead and spend however much 600 Racing or your local INEX dealer charges for them. Usually that's the price that they come from INEX, but if you don't want to spend the time to make it, then that's kind of a no-brainer, just go ahead and go through your dealer, but with only spending about 40 bucks in material all together, including everything that got destroyed. I feel like it's a pretty good win for us. This probably isn't the best quality we could have made it. I mean, this is our first welding project of this caliber besides just welding on new bumper tabs, but I'd say our welds are not complete garbage because they're holding everything together pretty well. And we were able to keep that heat discipline in so that we don't warp everything too much. Everything is still pretty straight. It uh, it holds pretty true on the ground. It's not wobbling too much, so that's pretty good. These do hook into both of the rear wheels right here on this lip, and uh, everything's welded in place pretty good. Hopefully this video helps you guys out to decide whether or not you want to build one, or maybe you guys just needed a visual guidance on how to build one. Hopefully this helps in that kind of case. But other than that, I've got nothing else for you. We do have one last race of the season on October 7th up at Colorado National Speedway. As long as the weather holds out, we are gonna be up there. So if you're in the area, come on out. But if not, I appreciate you guys watching and hope to catch you in the next one.